Pixel, and today I want to talk about these little bad boys down here. The Ven2 Transparent One Encore Plus powered bookshelf speakers, and their little brother, the Ven2 Transparent One Zeros. And I'm going to start with a bit of a hot take. It's my firm opinion, after years of experience, that a lot of audiophiles are completely full of shit. Now, don't take that personally, because I deliberately positioned myself between my two high-end bookshelf speakers, the R3 Metas, and I'm next to my nice streamer and integrated amp with nice cables and stuff like that. So I'm full of shit too. But I want to share a truth with you about the audiophile community that you listen to, one which I love and I follow all the time. I'm a very, I'm a very active listener and member of it. We all suffer from gear acquisition syndrome, other, otherwise known as GAS, which is a terrible acronym. Meaning that we have something really, really nice, but there could always be that prettier thing, that better streamer, those better cables, that better stand, the better speakers, the better headphones. And I've gone through a lot of them. My Canuck Audio Mart account is full of stuff that I've bought and sold over the years. A lot of it, very active account. However, despite that rabbit hole that I, and I'm sure you have fallen down yourself, there is one item in my studio, not only piece of audio equipment, but an item in general, be it audio, video, cameras, monitors, whatever, what, you name it, that I haven't been able to let go. And that's these. That's these speakers, the Vanity Transparent One on course. Because they have always served me well, and they are some of the best speakers you could possibly ask for for the price. The only time I use my R3 Metas is when I'm sitting down to listen to music music. But here's the thing. The reason I decided to make this video in the first place is because the other day, about a week ago, I finished my day of work and I wanted to kind of unwind at the end of the day. And what I usually like to do is I take my iPad, I open up chess.com, the app, and I start playing a couple of games of chess and I just put on my playlist on Rune. And I was listening to the playlist for around two, three minutes or so. And it wasn't until I hit around five minutes that I stopped for a second and I went, I'm not listening to my R3 Metas. My R3 Metas that cost several thousand dollars and they're not powered. You have to get a nice streamer and a nice amp and DAC or integrated amp or whatever the case might be and cables and speakers, towers and tower stands and all that kind of stuff. You need to get out that whole kit, which is thousands and thousands of dollars. And I realized I'm not listening to them. I wasn't paying close attention to where that music was coming from and I was 90% fooled that I was. I was listening to my Vanitus. And for the 50th time I stopped and went, you got me again. <laughs> you little bugger. I have gone through, I've had the best headphones that I could possibly ever want to spend money on, the HE1000SEs and the name Unity Atom and, and the Blue Sound Node and I've had beautiful you know, tower kef speakers and you name it. This is my end game right here, the R3 Metas. I absolutely adore these speakers. But I'll tell you something, if I had to get rid of, if I needed the money and I needed to sell a pair of speakers for the cash, these would be the first to go. These wouldn't because these are all around. They serve every purpose. I love listening to music with them. I love gaming with them. I love editing with them. They connect to Bluetooth. I can connect a streamer to it. It connects directly to my computer using a USB. It's an all-in-one package. They power themselves. For 600 and something American versus this, that the speakers themselves are a couple of thousand bucks. We're not talking about any of the other stuff you got to connect it to. And the fact that you're getting 90 to 95%, I think I could sacrifice losing those and all the other equipment and getting a big chunk of change back, but I can't bring myself to get rid of these. And I've pitted these against every set of speakers and headphones on the market that I've been able to get my hands on. And I keep coming back to these, nothing's replaced it. A good example would be, for instance, the Kanto bookshelf powered speakers, the direct competitors to these. In fact, I think they're a little bit more expensive or around the same price at least. I bought them, they look really pretty. I took them out of the box, I, I set them up, I plug them in, and I hit play, and I listen to them, and I'm like, well, oh, they sound good, they sound okay. And then I did an A-B test between the Cantos and these ones, and the minute I did that, I unplugged the Cantos, put them back in the box, and shipped them back to Amazon. Because the Cantos sound just like the Vanitus. If you were playing them through a pillow, <laughs> 
a thick pillow. They sounded like shit. There was no clarity. There was no tightness. There was no speed to them. There was no, the stage was just a muddy mess. I could clearly position instruments. I got a beautiful, nice open sound stage, but a nice neutral sound. The bass isn't over bloated, nothing. On top of it, right on the speaker itself, there are little analog knobs where you can adjust the bass in treble. I don't have to go through an app. I don't have to do anything like that. Everything just plug and play. And I get exactly the sound that I want. They respond extremely well to near field, how I like to use them for gaming or for, uh, or for editing or far field. You set them apart and you get a completely different sound stage just by moving them out a little bit. They're incredibly versatile. You don't need to spend thousands of bucks on a sound system where the differences between the two are, I hate to break it to you. I know this is the boring response, kind of negligible. This is one of the reasons why I love the cheap audio man so much. He just says it like it is. He knows that audio people are completely full of shit and they're looking for excuses to spend money. And I love the guy for that, but I love all of these audio files. I follow all of them. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an idiot just like the rest of you. But the true test of a quality piece of audio equipment is time. And the fact that these have lasted the test of time for me, and the fact that they're the ones that I keep coming back to, they're the ones that never leave my side despite everything else, is the reason why I'm making this video in the first place. But there's one more reason. And that reason is, when you, whenever I've had to call Vanatu for help, technical support with something or whatever, a guy answers the phone. Hey, is what you hear on the other end of the line. Not, hi, you've reached Amazon customer service. Thank you for being a prime customer. How can I? If... No, a guy answers the phone. Hi. And you go, hello? And they go, yeah, what's up? And I go, did I get the right number? Yeah, the Vanatu? Yeah, uh, uh, okay. And you have this conversation with this guy who are one of the guys who actually engineers and manufactures and distributes these beautiful speakers. They make them themselves. They're designed by a couple of passionate audiophiles that really know their stuff that in my opinion have made one of the best pieces of audio equipment on the market. And I've tried a lot of stuff out there. There's nothing about these speakers that don't hit the mark. They don't need an amp. They don't need a streamer. You can just plug and play and you're good to go. They're the best by far computer speakers. My only fear about Vanatu is, I have no idea how those two guys can have a 15 minute conversation on the phone with you when they've, got a, when they've got a product here that's so hot that it must be flying off the shelves. Now, if you're, just a quick point, if you're interested in the differences between these, the Vanatu Transparent One Encore Pluses or the Vanatu Transparent One Zeros, take everything that these have and just make it a little smaller. So a slightly smaller sound, slightly smaller stage, slightly less output, okay? But everything else is there. The other, the other exception is that it doesn't have EQ on it, it just has a volume knob, but you can connect a subwoofer to it, you can connect a streamer to it, you can connect it to your computer, it uses Bluetooth, all of those fixums are all there. If you can afford to splurge a little bit more, I would definitely recommend the Encore is more because I think that they'll last you longer. It's a worthwhile upgrade to get the Encore Pluses. But in my personal opinion is, you are absolutely fine with either or. You don't have to buy the R3 Metas, although you will anyways, because it's fun to get new stuff. But that's it. So I'm here to show my love and support for a company that doesn't only produce one of the best, most versatile products on the market for anybody who's into audio, but also two of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life, who's, who I want to support personally, because they're just awesome guys. Sound good? So thanks for watching and happy shopping. Take care.